At the end of the visit to the control room of unit number three of the Chernobyl power plant, we receive a safety instructions for our trip to the radiation affected parts of the building. We walk through the main corridor towards the crashed fourth block. We should not stay anywhere. We can see the places, but only for a moment, to get as low radiation as possible. Here, the levels of radiation, uh, when we will be at the upper level, it will be up to 4 5 micro per hour. When we will be at the Memorial to Valery Khodimchuk also, the levels will be higher. At the room where you will see the main circulating pumps, also the levels will be higher. That's why I ask everybody to go faster. That is the entrance to unit number four. That is the door to unit number four. The little shiny thing in the middle is the metal door to the block four destroyed by the explosion. To see something, I switch to the infrared mode. As soon as the local employee opens the door, the dosimeters start screaming. From this point on, the dosimeters will not stop screaming. Let us go. I have to explain why we wear protective clothing, gloves and respirators. It's not because of radiation itself. It won't threaten us if we will not stay here for a long time. It's because the irradiated dust should not be taken out. Well, we are near the wall, which was constructed between reactor number three, it is here, and destroyed reactor number four. Yeah? You can see that the levels of radiation now are higher, yeah? Are they, what, what is the level? 4.4. Microsiever trauma. 4.4 microsiever trauma. Because we are near the destroyed reactor 4. A wall separating the third block from the fourth block was built here after the explosion. Somewhere beyond this wall, Valery Chodemchuk died in the rubble. He was the only one person out of these 30, 30 workers, 30 engineers, chief number five engineers, who was not found. He was not found. You see, his colleague, Valery Pirivoshenko, he was one of those who realized that after the reactor explosion, it was time not to save a reactor. There was no reactor anymore. It had been exploded. There was no reactor core. Here there was an entrance. Earlier there was an entrance to unit number four. One cannot resist the idea of why there are so many protective measures if we take less radiation than in the same time on the plane. The problem is radiation levels change a lot here and we can only reach the least affected areas. We are moving into the hall with the main circulation pumps. During the fateful night these pumps were disconnected to see if it could be fed by a slowing turbine. Four main circulating pumps in the north the other four are located in the south. Reactor number three is here. It is here, it is between four main circulating pumps in the north, the other four in the south. Reactor number four is opposite. The same room, yeah, the same room with the main circulating pumps, northern main circulating pumps is located opposite. Hodimchuk was at the same room, but opposite. If you like the catastrophic movies, here you will get yourself in the middle of the one of the darkest. The darkest literally. On the third unit there is a very little light and the gloomy atmosphere is underlined by that. 
I turn on the infrared light again. Getting just a few meters from the site of the worst nuclear disaster impressed everyone. Instead of the usual jokes, we all around are in awe. Even a boy from Canada who, after being told that the entry to the power plant is not allowed to take pictures, he covered it with his camera in burst mode. But there is another surprise. We take a look at the second unit control room. It was shut down at the end of modernization after a fire in the engine room in 1991. That is the reactor hole, the central hole of reactor number two. You can see an upper reactor plate. Yeah, it's biological shield of RBM cartide reactor. The structure which weighs more than 2,000 tons. Just, just imagine, at reactor number four, as a result of the explosion, this very structure jumped almost 30 meters high. On unit two, they already have a monitor connected to the camera in the reactor hall. They didn't have it on the unit four at the time of the accident, so they couldn't see the popping plugs of the channels. They began to move. Yeah. That was the beginning, the beginning of a disaster. But at the control room they learned about the beginning of the disaster. The head of the reactor section, Valery Perevoschenko, ran to inform control room about the rising pressure in the reactor in vain. He uh, ran to the uh, control room of unit number four and he described what he had seen, what was the situation in the reactor core. Strange, strange as it was, but his words, they were not taken into account. Valery Perevoschenko died on June 1986. Although he was in control room at the time of the explosion, he returned to rescue his colleagues and received a lethal dose of radiation. At the exit of the main corridor, we go through dosimetric control. Lunch at the local canteen follows. Before it, however, surprisingly, a dosimetric control. Finally, we go round the whole power plant to the information center. Paradoxically, it's not allowed to take pictures here, even though the best view on the crashed block is from the info center window. And here we can see the biggest nonsense in the TV show. That is the scene where the evil Dyatlov sees pieces of graphite from the reactor down the corridor to continue to claim the reactor is not affected. From the 3D model, it's absolutely clear he couldn't see anything like this. The control room is much lower than the reactor. It was impossible to get through all the ruins and take a look. A pure time of moving was only 72 hours. More than two years ago, so-called ARC was slipped over the destroyed unit. It was completed a few weeks ago. The maximum velocity was 10 meters per hour. So, these were three hours spent in the power plant. I will enjoy dosimeters twice more at the exit of the first zone and at the exit of the fourth zone. I haven't come to the Ukraine only to visit Chernobyl. I have also shot the only accessible base of the Soviet strategic missiles and I have passed the most interesting parts of Kiev as well. I'll be happy to see you next time.